is WME sinking her? Hello, I'm HG Tudor. Back in April, Harry's wife signed up with a new agency, WME. Previously, she used Sunshine Sacks. But she moved across to WME, and at the time, the suggestion was that this powerful and well-connected agency would enable her to power into the big time that she would capitalise on existing gains, that she would make more money, become more prominent, have more reach, increase her popularity. That having utilised the whinging and moaning about her supposed treatment with the royal family, and largely exhausted that, she needed to go in another direction. And therefore, WME were brought in to address that new direction, to rehabilitate her image, to reinvent her again. But is it the case that they're actually trying to torpedo her? Or is it the case that she's unmanageable? What happened since April? Well, a brief summary is we've been subjected to some papwalk patheticness, the Ingriftus games, to desperate concert appearances, and the mic grab mayhem as of late. But let's drill down and examine what has been put forward with regard to this rehabilitation of Harry's wife in the last few months. I mentioned the papwalk patheticness, whereby Harry's wife has been repeatedly seen engaging in the most mundane of activities, but is putting it out there as if it's astonishing and groundbreaking. We saw her hiking in the road. Then she exited the dentist wearing an anti-stress patch. There was the farmer's market walkabout. The appearance at the sushi restaurant where she walked past Cameron Diaz but made it seem as if she was having dinner with her. There were the July the 4th pavement shops, and, of course, more recently, the in-and-out burger shot. None of these are particularly interesting, save from the perspective of enabling us to analyse them for the purpose of explaining why she does all of this, and as often prompted commentary about the incongruity of the clothing that she has worn with the circumstances in which she has appeared. But there has been a ramping up of these pap walks. What have they achieved? Largely ridicule. There then, of course, was the near-catastrophic car chase, which resulted in many people thinking, this woman is truly deluded, and demonstrated her propensity for telling lies embellishing, and just simply making a whole hullaboo out of nothing. We've also had the bizarre garden telephone call, where Harry's wife attempted to make it seem like she was down with the kids whilst not looking at the Prince of Pink Pancakes. She attended two Beyoncé concerts, one of which she ensured that she was filmed at, engaging in so bako foil strange wasp-up-the-arse dancing, which just generally resulted in more ridicule. She sought to take over the Invictus Games, making them the Harry's Wife Games, and turning it into her own personal fashion show. And, just recently, the Kevin Costner debacle, where she turned up wearing a horse blanket, annoyed Kevin Costner, and attempted to grab a mic, and generally looked out of place. Sprinkled in and around all of this nonsense, we've had repeated threats for the TIG to reappear, the threat that she's going to reappear on Instagram as some kind of the messiah is on her way. That doesn't really seem to have worked. Initially, there was discussion of somewhere in the region of 125,000, 130,000 people having signed up. It doesn't look like it's improved much beyond that. And when is this return to Insta going to be? So far, silence once again. There's been the threatened adaptation of Meet Me at the Lake, the Dior No Show, 
And, as usual, the scattergun approach of PR puff pieces bringing up the past or attempting to manifest deals for her. So that's the sum total of what she has essentially been doing over the last few months. Pap walks, telephone calls, in Grifters games, Beyonce concerts, Kevin Costner, TIG, Instagram, threatened adaptations, lots of PR puff pieces. What has it achieved? Spotify cancelled her back in June, and she and her husband were referred to by Simmons as fucking grifters. So that all went well. Jeremy Zimmer weighed in from another powerful agency to suggest, turns out, Harry's wife was not a great audio talent or necessarily any kind of talent. But let's have a look at all of the big deals that Harry's wife has signed up with content providers, fashion houses, and cosmetic companies. Here they are, listed. Yes, the square root of fuck all. Now let's list all of the new content that has been produced that has adorned our screens. Again, the square root of fuck all. Now we're going to do a sound representation of her popularity. <laughs> Throw in some rumours of her separating from her husband and the fact that Harry has repeatedly appeared grumpy and miserable throughout this. Whoopie fucking do. What a return that has been. Not only have we seen a shambolic approach to the rehabilitation of her image, what has it actually garnered? Well, from the narcissistic perspective, it's enabled her to assert control over people, but by the same token, because her endeavours have been repeatedly ridiculed and derided, she has faced challenge after challenge, threat after threat to control. As you know, she invariably deals with those threats as a consequence of complaining to other people or simply ignoring them. But all it's yielded is a lot of threats to her control as she's been criticised more than ever. She's garnered plenty of fuel, so that's an advantage. No real character traits to obtain. And what about residual benefits? Well, the facade has been managed to an extent, but the money hasn't come flowing in, which is of huge importance to her. And she's also faced increased scrutiny about her appearance and the suggestion of advanced ageing and use of a Zempic, etc. All of which adds up to more threats to control and the denting of a particular aspect of her facade as being a beautiful, fashion-conscious woman. If you were represented by an agency and this was your resume for the last few months alongside a list of achievements, you would be saying... What the fuck? You call this representation? You've had nearly six months, and what have I got in that period? Which then raises the question, an agency of the weight, power, reach of WME failing to make any sensible achievement during the last six months, and in fact causing her popularity to go even further backwards and resulting in repeated criticisms of her, you'd have to say either you're massively incompetent, which clearly isn't the case, they're a renowned agency with some real heavy hitters who represent many successful people, so it can't be put down to incompetence. Is it the, perhaps the fact that they are deliberately wanting to torpedo her? Is it the case that she is having to pay them and they're milking it and then they're just going to get it to a position whereby she eventually becomes so frustrated with them that she fires them and they think, see ya, thanks for all the dough. It's possible. But 
it doesn't set a particularly good image for the agency, notwithstanding the fact that it's Harry's wife. What I see at play here is her narcissism. She is an unmanageable client. Remember, Harry's wife is far cleverer than any of us on this planet. Harry's wife is far more skilled at whatever she wants to do. She wants to write a book. It's mind-blowingly brilliant. She wants to wear particular clothing. She blows you away with just how amazing it fits her. She wants to make a speech. You are there, slack-jawed at the brilliant invective that she has issued towards you. Harry's wife is a colossus in her own mind. And the problem is this. Notwithstanding the endeavours of WME and its relevant agents, she is an unmanageable client because through the delusion of her narcissism, she believes that she knows better. And therefore, there will be repeated meetings where people are frustrated as they suggest, do this, don't do that. And Harry's wife thinks, I'm not going to do what you suggested, I'm going to go along with this instead. There's a collective groan around the boardroom table as people think, oh, for fuck's sake, she's got it wrong again. How has she got it wrong again? As they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Zero deals, zero content produced, popularity tanked, separation rumours, repeated derision both across social media and the mainstream media. But of course, Harry's wife will never ever accept that all of these problems have originated from her. It's as a consequence of incompetent management, that things haven't gone her way, that the haters are out in force, that Harry buggered things up with what he wrote in spare, that the moon was in the wrong phase, that apparently she, somebody failed amongst the staff to walk with the shins around the blasted oak three times, resulting in a plague being visited upon her popularity house. Whatever it might be, Harry's wife is not at fault, and instead, the fact that she is this unmanageable client, because she knows best. Some narcissists will harness the advice that comes to them. Others reject it, because they believe that they know better. Invariably, when you hire experts, you do so because they are better at what they do than you, and that's why you're paying them. So that's why you hire a lawyer, or an architect, or an interior designer, or somebody to come and fix your leaking sink. Somebody to build a house. All of these people have expertise, and you haven't got it. But Harry's wife believes that she has. She believes that she knows what's best. And when it goes right, as occasionally it does, that's all down to her brilliance. And when it goes wrong... That's not as a consequence of her interference and failure to listen to advice. It's simply as a consequence of something else causing the failure, because it can't be down to her. It's an interesting look back over the last few months to see just what crap she has been involved in, and how little it has achieved, and how much it has caused her a problem. And therefore, ultimately you have to question what the dickings of WME been doing. And the answer is, they face an unmanageable client because her narcissism, through the sense of entitlement, lack of accountability, manipulative behaviours, grandiosity and haughtiness cause her to believe that she knows what to do. And thus she regularly goes off-piste, no doubt causing the agents to slam their fists on the desk in frustration and tear out clumps of their hair. I should imagine that most of the agents are bold by now as a consequence of their repeated frustration at dealing with this woman. I don't see it as WME deliberately looking to torpedo her, but rather they're just having to deal with a very difficult and unmanageable client. What are your thoughts about the matter? Do you think she's just a victim of circumstance? Do you think that WME are deliberately trying to cause problems for her in order to cause a parting of the ways? Or do you agree with me that it's down to her narcissism and being an unmanageable client? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section as always. I'm HG Tudor. Thank you for listening.